Peter Hitchens, a prominent British journalist and author, shares his perspectives on the upcoming UK general election and the state of British politics. He argues strongly against voting for the Labour Party, which he sees as a grave threat to British society and civil institutions. Hitchens contends that while he loathes the Conservative Party, voters should strategically vote against Labour to prevent what he views as a catastrophic Labour government under Keir Starmer. Hitchens emphasizes that voting is not a sacrament or civic duty, but a practical act with measurable effects. He advises people to determine what outcome they least want and vote against it. In the current context, he believes the worst outcome would be the second half of the Blair Revolution under a Labour government. Hitchens rejects accusations of being a contrarian, insisting his positions are principled and well-considered, even if they appear contradictory to some. Hitchens expresses deep concern about Labour leader Keir Starmer, whom he characterizes as a hard-left figure despite Starmer's public image as a centrist. He points to Starmer's background, including involvement with far-left groups in his youth and his role as secretary of the Haldane Society of Socialist Lawyers. Hitchens argues that Starmer represents a sophisticated, modern form of leftism that is poorly understood by most political commentators. Hitchens describes the Blair Revolution as a profound transformation of British society that began under Tony Blair's Labour government. He cites examples like the Equality Act, which he claims fundamentally altered the moral and social nature of the country. Hitchens warns that a Labour victory would lead to the completion of this revolution, including constitutional changes that would make Labour's reforms irreversible. Hitchens outlines several areas of concern regarding Labour's potential agenda. One, constitutional changes, including reform of the House of Lords and increased powers for the Supreme Court. Two, further devolution and creation of regional assemblies. Three, lowering the voting age to 16. Four, potential changes to immigration policy. Five, pursuit of aggressive net zero environmental policies. He argues that these changes would fundamentally alter the nature of British democracy and society. While advocating for voting against Labour, Hitchens is deeply critical of the Conservative Party. He argues that the Conservatives have failed to deliver on key promises, particularly regarding immigration. Hitchens contends that the party has never been truly conservative, describing it as an organization for retaining office for the sons of gentlemen. He sees the current conservative government as essentially continuing Blair's policies without fully understanding them. Hitchens paints a bleak picture of the current state of British politics and society. He argues that the country is pursuing a path of self-destruction, citing economic problems and what he sees as a fanatical pursuit of environmental policies. Hitchens suggests that anyone able to leave the country should consider doing so, as he sees little hope for improvement in the near future. Hitchens criticizes the media's role in shaping public perception, particularly regarding opinion polls. He argues that polls are often misleading and can unduly influence voters. Hitchens encourages people to think independently and not let polls dictate their voting decisions. Hitchens dismisses the Reform UK party, led by Nigel Farage, as a Thatcherite tribute band that lacks a developed set of positions on social and cultural matters. He argues that voting for Reform UK effectively helps Labour by splitting the anti-Labour vote. When asked to define conservatism, Hitchens describes it as love of God, country, beauty, family, and fellow man, expressed through fair institutions. He emphasizes attachment to freedom, the rule of law, and a reluctance to change unless necessary. Hitchens argues that the current Conservative Party does not embody these principles. Hitchens is pessimistic about the future of British politics, regardless of the election outcome. He believes that even if Labour is kept out of power, the country faces significant challenges. Hitchens suggests that the best-case scenario would be a five-year reprieve under a conservative government, during which time a genuine conservative alternative could potentially emerge. Hitchens' primary advice to voters is to vote against Labour, which in most cases means voting conservative. He acknowledges this is not an ideal solution, but argues it is necessary to prevent what he sees as a far worse outcome under Labour. Hitchens urges voters to think independently 
and not be swayed by opinion polls or media narratives. Hitchens argues that Britain needs to reassess its place in the world. He suggests that the country's obsession with being a great power prevents it from becoming a smaller, happier, and more prosperous nation. Hitchens believes this issue is largely undiscussable in British politics, but is crucial for the country's future. Hitchens is cautious about making firm predictions for the election outcome. He expresses skepticism about opinion polls, citing historical examples of polls being wrong. Hitchens suggests that the actual result could be quite different from what current polls indicate. Throughout the interview, Hitchens presents himself as a voice of reason in what he sees as an irrational and uneducated society. He expresses frustration at the lack of attention paid to his warnings, but has come to accept his role as a modern-day Cassandra, predicting doom but being largely ignored. Peter Hitchens presents a deeply pessimistic view of British politics and society, warning of what he sees as potentially catastrophic consequences of a Labour victory in the upcoming election. While critical of the Conservative Party, he advocates for strategic voting against Labour as the lesser of two evils. Hitchens' analysis touches on deep-seated issues in British politics, including the nature of conservatism, the legacy of new Labour, and Britain's struggle to define its place in the post-imperial world. His provocative views challenge conventional wisdom and urge voters to think critically about the choices before them in the upcoming election.